panel for testifying. Uh, this issue uh, arose quickly, and I'm glad we are addressing it today so that some certainty can be given to the numerous uh, businesses seeking answers as they try to continue the pursuits in the global marketplace. Uh, Mr. Espinol and uh, Mr. Murphy, I know you touched on this a bit, but what challenges are companies facing as they evaluate and even implement the other mechanisms in the EU that permit data transfers to countries outside the EU? So one specific challenge that companies are facing, big companies and small companies, is the processing of their payroll and making sure that their employees get on time. If, this, if there's not a resolution of the safe harbor, that is something that could be at risk, and that is obvious business disruption, um, but is also disruption to the lives of human beings that are employed by those companies. Um, let me mention one thing that I haven't mentioned before. We did a survey uh, last year, which I would be happy to share, where we talked to the CEOs and senior executives of companies in the United States and Europe in terms of what data meant to them and how valuable it was to their business. And one of the things that was really surprising to me is if you really small companies, companies that have less than 50 employees, already today find data enormously important to going into new markets, serving their customers, um, developing new products. Um, what I found less surprising is that that is true on both sides of the Atlantic. So for U.S. companies and for European companies, the, the ability to move data back and forth in order to do business is critically important. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Espinel. Mr. Murphy? Uh, well, little to add, but I would just, uh, uh, to recapitulate one point, the, the morning the ruling came out, um, I think many of us were just uh, disappointed at the lack of any guidance that came out from the European Commission. And there's been a little bit more since then, um, but that is exactly the kind of uh, um, uncertainty that is worse, and it's, it's the last thing that the global economy overall needs right now. Oh, thanks so much. Uh Another question for you, Mr. Murphy. Uh, what impact does the European Court of Justice ruling have on the negotiations of other large-scale international trade agreements like the TPP and the TTIP? So the United States and the European Union are two years into negotiating a comprehensive uh, uh, transatlantic trade and investment uh, partnership agreement. Um, these negotiations are still at a relatively early stage despite the length of time involved. Um, this kind of a ruling, though, it does certainly uh, put a damper on the mood in the room. Uh, after all, the TTIP, as that negotiation is called, is intended to safeguard the, not just the movement of goods and services across international borders, but also data as a trade issue. U.S. trade agreements, including the TPP, um, have uh, strong measures to prohibit the forced localization of data. And of course, privacy regimes coexist with those trade obligations, um, and privacy obligations are not undermined by the trade agreements. Uh, but the situation we have right now with the uh, invalidation of the Safe Harbor Agreement uh, certainly um, has led some to question uh, the seriousness with, uh, with which we can move forward in those negotiations. So there are some national security concerns uh, until, we, until the uh, Safe Harbor Harbor Agreement is signed. Well, certainly for uh, commercial data and the ability to move it across border, that's um, um, that is that is very much a concern. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Dr. Meltzer. Uh, what impact has the global reach of the internet had on small and medium-sized businesses? Uh, you mentioned in your testimony that they are underrepresented in internet and medium-sized businesses in international trade agreements going forward. Traditionally, SMEs have not been big players in the international economic landscape. It's been for a variety of reasons to do with costs and capacity. The internet has certainly changed that for them. The International Trade Commission did an interesting study which found that access to information, for instance, about overseas markets has been one of the key barriers for small and medium-sized enterprises in just thinking about going global. That cost of getting that information is obviously now close to zero. That's just one example of the many ways that internet and internet platforms are now providing new opportunities for SMEs to be part of the global economy. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. 